remind all those in authority, and they may say, you've got no business, little man, reminding any of us of anything. And I say, well, with all due respect, you may be right. The little man maybe shouldn't be reminding the big man of things like that. Other big men ought to remind the big men of their <laughs> omissions. Pray. Pray the rosary. But I remind all those in authority, and they may say, you've got no business, little man, reminding any of us of anything. And I say, well, with all due respect, you may be right. The little man maybe shouldn't be reminding the big man of things like that. Other big men ought to remind the big men of their <laughs> omissions. And some of them have, and some of them have, and they're heroes. And you ought to thank God for them. The hour is late. Bishops, make a stand. Show some backbone. Pastoral care, sometimes love has to be strong. Oh, it's patient and kind, to be sure. But it also has to be strong. The moment has come for greatness. The time for mediocrity is long past. The time for sitting on a fence. Overdue. God's about to reach down and shake the fence. And which side will we be on? Will we be found to have been defenders of truth? Defenders of life? or through indifference or cowardice, something less than that. The world cries out for a hero, the political order, and the ecclesial as well. And the faithful, for your part, you need to pray like you've never prayed before, for the approach of the deadline is coming, the approach of midnight, the approach of deep, dark darkness, the approach of an evil beyond your wildest imagination, if we don't act, if we don't act. So I'd tell you, how many, how many more abortions can God countenance? How much more immorality can he endure? Goes from bad to worse. I have often read a passage that frightened me, and yet it encourages me, and I'll read it to you in closing. It's a passage from the book of the prophet Ezekiel, chapter 3. No, yes, chapter 3, verse 16 and following. And at the end of the seven days, Ezekiel says, the word of the Lord came to me. Son of man, I have made you a watchman for the house of Israel. Whenever you hear a word from my mouth, you shall give them warning from me. If I say to the wicked, you shall surely die, and you give him no warning, nor speak to warn the wicked from his wicked way, in order to save his life, that wicked man shall die in his iniquity. But his blood I will require at your hands. But if you warn the wicked, and he does not turn from his wickedness or from his wicked way, he shall die in his sins, but you will have saved your life. Again, if a righteous man turns from his righteousness and commits iniquity, and I lay a stumbling block before him, he shall die, because you have not warned him. He shall die for his sin, and his righteous deeds which he has done shall not be remembered, but his blood I will require at your hand. Nevertheless, if you warn the righteous man not to sin, and he does not sin, he shall live because of the warning and you 
you will have saved your soul. The greater the authority, the greater the responsibility. To be Catholic is a great gift. To be Christian, a great gift. The great gift carries with it a commensurate responsibility. To be a Catholic politician or servant of the people is a great gift. The great gift carries with it a commensurate responsibility. To be a priest or a bishop in the Catholic Church is a great gift. Carries with it an awesome responsibility. A responsibility to at least exercise the spiritual works of mercy, one of which is to admonish the sinner, one of which is to instruct the ignorant, one of which is to counsel the doubtful. We have a lot of doubt. We have a lot of ignorance. And we have a lot of sin. And so we have a lot of spiritual mercy to be handing out. It is a merciful thing to call the sinner to repentance. It is a merciful thing to point to those who have caused grave public scandal and to cause them or require them to repent publicly. I believe, and there are many theologians who would disagree, I believe that these persons, because of the gravity of their act, because it is tantamount to heresy, have brought down a canonical penalty on themselves. I believe they've separated themselves from the body of Christ. Their words say one thing and their actions say quite another. And actions do speak louder than words. And so is it pastoral care to let them skip and dance on their merry way to hell? Or rather, should we get a backbone and get a brain and get some real pastoral care and some real mercy and charity and help. Yes, we come to those crossroads in life where we have to make a decision. Be comfortable, coast along, don't rock the boat, don't make any waves and consign yourself to mediocrity at best and hell at worst? Or do we make a decision to shake off the yoke of mediocrity and to make a decision that comes from faith, strong faith in the principles which the martyrs died for, principles which are now being trampled underfoot by those who call themselves Catholics? and being allowed to get away. And the faithful, for your part, you need to pray like you've never prayed before. For the approach of the deadline is coming, the approach of midnight, the approach of deep, dark darkness, the approach of an evil beyond your wildest imagination if we don't act.